Okay, so what we want to do is apply all this Rayleigh-Taylor type thinking to a magnetized plasma and show how it really turns out to happen. So it turns out if you go through all this analysis and uh, do it upright for a plasma, what you find is that omega squared turns out to be minus. Indeed, I'll write it in the opposite direction of what we had before, but anyway, the mass density part, and that's dotted into P over rho mass uh, naught uh, gradient of the logarithm of B. Uh, and again, if I had put it in here, I would get plus K squared V sound squared, but we usually don't worry about that. Um, and remembering that this is itself um, the sound speed squared. Um, this pen seems to be losing out on me here, so we'll start on another one. Uh, then I can write all of this as omega squared is equal to minus V sound squared times the gradient of the logarithm of the mass density dotted into the gradient of the logarithm of B. Uh, and if I wanted to do it, I could note that this also has a plus K squared V sound squared usual sound wave propagation. What happens then? Well, the, the basic schematic idea is that, uh, as I'll just uh, plot down here, is that if I imagine that I had a magnetic field whose strength, and you know, I'm imagining sort of a cylinder here or something like that, whose strength is smallest on axis, and I tried to, at r equals zero, and I tried to fill it with plasma, which is to say that I had some, you know, plasma pressure like this, um, then this is actually in a so-called minimum B situation, okay? So this is uh, so-called minimum B. Now the question is, is that stable or unstable? Well, let's use our little formula here. Uh, what our little formula says is we take grad log B, which is you know, going to be outward. So let's uh, indicate that. So grad log B or grad B is going to be in that direction but grad pressure is going to be in that direction, or grad mass density, I should say, actually. And so, you know, uh, what this says is these two are opposite in direction, so when I dot them into each other, I'll get a minus sign, and then I'll just get some sound waves, basically. So this is actually stable. On the other hand, and when you write it in this way, it kind of, kind of makes sense directly, let's just say. But let's suppose that what I was trying to do was I had a magnetic hill. Okay, So this is going to be a maximum B situation. And I put some plasma on top of the hill. Now, by making this analogy, you of course, sort of know what's going to happen. It's going to ooze down the hill, basically. But let's sort of show that that's kind of what happens here. Well, grad B is now in the opposite direction to what it was before. And, but the grad mass density is still in the same direction. Okay? So now these two are aligned. I get a plus sign out of this, overall minus sign. Omega squared is negative. I get complex conjugate roots, one of which is unstable. So indeed, the idea is that a plasma likes minimum B, you know, or I'm sorry, plasma will be confined by a minimum B situation because I'm putting it in a magnetic well is what it amounts to. On the other hand, if I try to put the plasma on top of a magnetic hill, it will just undergo one of these interchange or Rayleigh Taylor type instabilities and it on this edge right here what you'll find is it'll just sort of ooze down the hill with various uh, or with a what's called a flute like because it's nearly constant along the field lines but anyway an interchange type instability interchange is units of what, what's meant by the word interchange is it takes a an element of high fluid density and moves it over here and exchanges with it a low fluid density element 
in, but, but in the process, that means the plasma is oozing down the hill. Okay, let's now apply this logic to a real magnetic mirror situation. We kind of like magnetic mirrors. Uh, what does all this tell us relative to a magnetic mirror? So let's look about uh, a magnetic mirror. First, we'll have to um, sketch our usual magnetic mirror. Uh, so what we do is we have this uh, usual coils here. So we'll have them coming out of the, you know, currents coming out of the board. And this will create magnetic field lines, which will do sort of this. Yeah, there's a few more field lines in here. And so all the field lines are moving from left to right here. And uh, our idea uh, is that, you know, we'd like to confine a plasma in the center in here. So we'd like to have a plasma in here. And maybe it still has a little bit of, of density out in here. So, you know, just to make it a continuous density sort of thing. Okay, uh, so where's the magnetic field big and where is it small? Well, this is going to be a little more difficult than what we thought, but let's uh, go through it. Where's the magnetic field the biggest on this entire diagram? It's right under the mirror throats, right? Where's it sort of, what is it here? Well, it's sort of smaller. Okay, and how about off here? Well, it's smaller yet. I'm getting place I can't draw it. Okay. Now, we said earlier that it was only the perpendicular motions of the plasma, where the plasma and the fluid interchanged and did things. It was just free flow along magnetic fields. So I really don't care about the part parallel to the magnetic field. But then you see I've got this problem that the magnetic field is, in fact, smaller off-axis than, than on-axis. So, in fact, if I look at this, I'm trying to put the plasma, at least on some average sense, in a high magnetic field region. And what does it do? It rolls off to the side with one of these, in, one of these interchange instabilities. So the problem is that a simple, this is called a simple mirror, the simple mirror is a maximum B in uh, uh, configuration. A maximum B, not what we wanted, a maximum B configuration. Namely, I'm trying to put the plasma at a high magnetic field region and a low magnetic field region off axis, uh, you know. Uh, and so this is unstable to this fluid-like uh, in, interchange instability. And sure enough, in the early 60s and for many years, people have demonstrated this experimentally. You put a plasma in and it forms a flute and uh, flute-like perturbations. This is a cylinder of plasma here. Uh, and the plasma then forms flutes around it and, and just oozes out perpendicularly. How can you solve this? Well, it turns out you can uh, add what are called Yaffe bars after a Russian physicist named Yaffe uh, who um, provided a, a means of solving this uh, to produce a minimum B situation, a minimum B situation, in which case you get it stable. How did he do that? Well, you have to, to look at cross-section here. This is an, an axisymmetric situation, okay? And within that, there's nothing I can do. I can put on more coils, but that's not going to help me. But if I go non-axisymmetric, I can do something. And what Yaffe did, both proposed, uh, proposed and then experimentally demonstrated, is if you look at the cross-section here, what he did is he said, well, let's put along here, okay, imagine I got this cylinder and I put a bunch of wires along here. So first look at my 
plasma cross section here, not very well centered, and imagine I put one coil here going this direction with a current coming out of the board and then one up here going into the board, a quadrupole field is what it's called, and then one coming, going, coming at me and one going away. Or if you kind of schematically see what you're trying to do here, I have the two coils on the ends, okay, these two coils, and then what I do is I put uh, a coil here, a current carrying coil there, another current carrying coil there, another current carrying coil there, uh, and then another one. Let's see, I need another one back uh, here. Didn't get them quite right. That one has to go from here. From there over to there. Okay, so the idea is then that now if, uh, if I make these quadrupole coils strong enough, then as I sit at the center of the plasma and move outward, I'm, okay, if I sit at the center of the plasma and move outward, I'm moving outward to a region where I'm getting closer to these coils, and each of these coils then produce, um, let's see, that one goes that way, produce an additional magnetic field, okay, um, and that additional magnetic field, when I add it to the straight, the straight mirror field, will be minimum on axis, okay, and then increase as I move outward. So the idea is the combination of the regular mirror field plus these so-called Yaffe bar fields will give us a minimum B situation. Now, this is kind of hard to keep track of, and so what's a different way of doing all this, that is to say rather than minimum B or maximum B, is to remember that in fact the curvature of the magnetic field also indicated uh, minimum or maximum B. So let me try to describe, oh and I'm sorry, one other thing I should mention, when you do up the analysis properly, um, you have to integrate an average over a field line, whether it's a minimum B or maximum B situation. Uh, but the average is dominated, it turns out, by the low magnetic field region, so it's dominated by this central region, not the region under the mirror throats. So what I next want to talk about is the uh, relation, let me just call it, uh, between minimum B, uh, maximum B, and uh, magnetic field curvature. So the idea here uh, is that we remember that the magnetic field curvature, which was defined as B dot grad B, uh, is approximately, for a low beta plasma, low ratio of plasma pressure to magnetic pressure is approximately 1 over B grad perp of B. But I can also write that as minus the radius of curvature vector divided by the radius of curvature squared. So let's just remember that if I have a magnetic field situation where the field lines do this, you, you kind of know that I've got to have a source of current over here, right? so as to, to cause that. Now, because of that, you sort of can look at this and you can say, well, at any given point, okay, this is the radius of curvature of that field line, okay? But you can look at the field line and think of where the, uh, where the source of, of the current source giving rise to these fields is, and you can see that B is going to be big here and small there. Okay, so grad B will be in this direction. But the radius of curvature is in the opposite direction. Okay? So now the question, so in other words, you can usually, almost, almost always, relate the 
direction of radius of curvature. By the way, it doesn't have to be at the center of the current, so let's just say it's to there. Um, and that wasn't too good a field line because it didn't have enough curvature to it in the position, so we'll make a little more curvature. Uh, anyway, you can see that, roughly speaking, the radius of curvature is in the opposite direction of grad B. So if I just look instead of grad B, I could look at the radius of curvature, then uh, you know, I would just change the direction, um, minus signs between them. Now, where would you like to put the plasma so as to be able to get, you know, uh, get yourself a minimum B situation? Well, obviously, you'd like to put the plasma out here, okay? And so this is defined, if you put the plasma here, this is defined as good curvature relative to that. On the other hand, if you put the plasma here, you'd be effectively trying to put it on top of a magnetic hill, and that would be bad curvature. So I want to I want to just sketch uh, those as a kind of completion of this business. Um, so let's call this what's called good and bad magnetic field curvature good and bad relative to the stimulation of these interchange-like uh, um, instabilities. So good and bad magnetic field curvature. Um, so if we have minimum B, uh, that would be, you remember, grad P dot grad B less than zero. That would lead to good curvature. Uh, and that actually is the radius of curvature dot grad P uh, is greater than zero. And let me just kind of uh, then sketch what that is. There's sort of there's these field lines that are doing this. And the good curvature sense is that I try to put the plasma outside here. And then what I have uh, is I have grad P in this direction. B is big here and small here. So my grad B is in this direction. And the radius of curvature is in this direction. So indeed, this is the radius of curvature and grad P aligned and vice versa. On the other hand, we could have... Uh, maximum B, and that would correspond to grad P dot gradient B uh, greater than zero, and this would be what we would call bad curvature, uh, and here we would have then the radius of curvature dot grad P is less than zero, and again, to just kind of sketch what we're trying to do here, we would have field lines doing this, uh, well, that's enough of them, and what we would be trying to do is put the plasma in here, and where B is big, uh, and again, we'll still have grad B in this direction, and the radius of curvature in this direction, but now we have that grad P is in this direction. So the basic idea, again and again, is that you would like to arrange that you have the plasma in the minimum magnetic field region. Uh, by the way, there still will be some magnetic field out here, but it's you know presumably much, much weaker. So really it'll be. And so the idea is that um, you'd like to arrange that the plasma is outside the maximum of the magnetic field but in particular more in the minimum magnetic field region, not like trying to put it on a magnetic hill. But people often talk about this in terms of a, a curvature, good and bad curvature, which is easily related to grad B. Now, what do you do as a sort of final point? What do you do in a toroidal situation? Uh, it turns out like a tokamak, and it's kind of hard to draw, so let me just sketch briefly. But... In that situation, you have a magnetic field, which a field line, which actually goes as, goes helically around the torus from the outside to the inside. When the field line's on the outside, you have bad curvature. 
You just kind of look at my finger and I try to put a plasma in here. It's, I'm putting it on a hill. On the other hand, when I get over to the inside, the curvature's like, like this, and the plasma's here. So I get good curvature. What do you do? Well, you, uh, in, what you have to do in, in many configurations, uh, you have both good and bad curvature. And bad curvature. along a magnetic field line. What do you do? Well, remember, all of this is effectively only along magnetic, I'm sorry, perpendicular to magnetic field lines, and we have more or less free flow along field lines. So what you try to do is you try to get minimum average B. By average means you average the curvature in a proper way, which is kind of complicated. It's an integral DL over B, as it's called. So you try to get uh, a minimum or average minimum B, or, uh, well, yeah, let's call it, uh, an average minimum B situation. And it turns out tokamaks, for instance, are that sort of situation. So the, the comment is you try to get average minimum B, where you have to average that the field line has some good curvature regions and some bad curvature regions. And in Tokamax, it turns out, <coughs> excuse me, it turns out that that is indeed um, a possibility. So next time, what we will do, this has been the fluid-like and one of the main instabilities in plasmas that you have to worry about because it's an ideal MHD sound wave type instability that is very violent when it happens. And what you try to do is arrange then that, that you have a minimum B or minimum average B situation to avoid these instabilities. Most magnetic confinement devices try to arrange that. What we want to talk about next time are so-called two-stream instabilities and some sense of loss cone type instabilities, <clears throat> which come into more what additional things that can happen in plasmas.